everyone. This is Jesse Bowen with my co-host, Natalie McQueen, and this is the Become an Author podcast. We are excited. Uh, I mean, I'm super excited again. I always say that, Natalie. I'm going to have to start <laughs> finding some new words to, to sort of describe how I feel every day. But I am super excited because of your award that you just won uh, through the International Impact Award. And, you know, I mean, it, that is phenomenal. Uh, love your book, the things that you're doing. But, you know, our podcast is really about to share the excitement that we're always having here because of the success. When you're having success, you're always, you know, you're always excited. And that's what we're having at Elite Publications, a lot of success sharing with our authors. Every week we bring authors on to talk about their book and and also share some tips in that. But now they just want to say, you know, congratulations. I need for you to show that beautiful award. <laughs> We're kicking off the show with that beautiful award. All right. Well, thank you, Jesse. It's exciting to be here. I'll tell you what. So when you start writing your book, you never think down the path like someday this is going to impact people and someday you're going to win an award for your book, right? So it's, it's kind of um, humbling and exciting at the same time, but what an experience. The International Impact Award, they had an event here in Phoenix and there, there was probably over a hundred people. And I, there was six of us that got awards and got to go up on stage and stuff. So it was really nice. So I don't know if you can see it well. Yeah, that looks good. But it's a beautiful award. Whoops. And yeah, it was just, it was one of those moments that it seems a little surreal, but at the same time, when you do write a book, the idea is to have that impact on people. And when you do it right, and we have we have our class that we put on a couple uh, weeks ago, the workshop that really helps authors to map out your book so you know that you're using your story, your tools, your experience, your wisdom um, in the most impactful way that will uh, reside with your key reader, the person that you want to speak to. If you're not you know, it, it's great to say, I want to impact, say, all women with curly hair, and you write a book about straight hair, <laughs> you know, it's not going to work. <laughs> so you really have to zoom in on your target audience. <laughs> Jesse's laughing. <laughs> it's always a hair issue with me, and he never has hair issues. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, but, yeah, the key is to really know your audience and write for that one person. Well, you know, the other part that we wanted to talk about today was the audio book. And so many times we, we focus on the book, the book, the book, the book, but your book has so many different doors. We have the written book. Uh, there are a lot of times people don't have time to actually uh, sit down and read your book. You know, sometimes we have to break a book down. Let me read a little bit now. I got to go to work. You know, I'm 25 minutes away, you know, yeah. but there is the audio book. You know, I know for myself, you know, personally, you know, with all the things that I do, I don't have uh, the time. I make time to do uh, reading or study work on certain, you know, different things. But on an Audible or on uh, Pandora. Every time I turn, get in my car, Pandora's on. So a lot of my books are on Pandora and these other platforms that I can listen to. So let's talk about that today. So if you're an author, and then you should consider having an Audible book because there's a whole, uh, there's a huge group of people out there like myself I don't have time to sit down and necessarily read the book, but I can get into my car or I can be jogging or I can be walking. I've got my headset on. And while I'm doing this, this book is playing in the background that's providing that information that I need to do. And this is what we've done with our, our latest book. 
uh, Elite Martial Arts in America. It is actually on CD Baby now, and CD Baby will be distributed to all the others, some like a hundred different platforms, right. and you can actually download it from our website. So let's talk about because that's another expertise area that you're actually in, Natalie. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not only another avenue, but there are people that you said that never read books. So if you're excluding an audiobook, then you're excluding that whole market of people. And I'm I'm one of those people. I I read, but 90% of my books are through Audible. I plug my earphones in the morning and I'm making my bed, brushing my teeth, getting ready. And I'm cruising through a couple chapters. So I can go through a book a week or a book, maybe a week and a half. And I'm getting that personal development in or, or that book where if I only had to read books, <laughs> I would probably read one book every two months for, for entertainment because we read so many manuscripts and you know have to keep up on, on the stuff that we do. So audiobooks can be um, another source of income, and you can either read your own audiobook, but you must um, do it professionally. And like Audible has very strict guidelines of how it's done. So please don't just get on and record yourself without knowing because it's it's not that easy. And we can always, we have many voice actors that we can match um, the tone of how you want your book read and um, and then get it done by a professional. And then we take care of the uploading and we put it into your account so you get all the royalties. Is there anything? Well, that's, a, that's a key point that we have there is that the book, uh, having an audible book, uh, or as I said, you know, and audible is very, uh, picky about uh, what goes up on their platform. Uh, there are other platforms that you can utilize that, you know, that will, uh, you know, your AI books, that's a new, the new hot things of doing. So, but we can take care of all those things. So if you do have a book and you want to turn that book into an audible mm -hmm. book, then remember, reach out. You can go to elitepublications.org, schedule appointment, we'll get you in and we'll talk about your book. So remember, you've got your paperback book. If it's dead, give us a call. We're gonna bring life back to it. You wanna add your audible book in there, then you know, give us a call. We can take care of that for you. If you wanna turn your book into a coaching program, give us a call and we can help you actually be able to do that. So now that I don't wanna take any more time away from, we have a special guest today that you're bringing in. So. Why don't you take that time? I'm going to let you intro. Absolutely. So this gentleman, his name is Trevor Perry. And he, as you can see, he calls himself a storyteller, an instigator, and an agitator. <laughs> so Trevor, come on on and let's talk about, I have your book here, Never Iron When You Are Naked. <laughs> and it's just a delightful book. Welcome, Trevor. Thank you so much. Welcome. I'm really pleased to be here. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm a computer weenie. And uh, my mother said that I was good at math. So I had to go and become an accountant. And I got to college and I went, hang on, what's this computer thing? And so I've been a computer weenie ever since. <laughs> was I've always been a bit of a nutcase. So when I finally got speaking all the time, I turned into... Uh, a bit of an entertainer and uh, I left for a little while and then I came back with a story to tell and I became a motivational speaker on top of everything else and so I speak to techies primarily I'm changing that right now but um, the techies always want a handout so the problem was is I have a session called get a life and it was very well attended and I won awards and medals for it it was a lot of fun and all the techies went, hand out, please, hand out. I said, I can't give you a handout. It's a motivational session. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat down and I wrote Never Iron When You're Naked, which is one of the things that I talk about. And uh, 
it's been something that uh, has been perennial. It's sort of, you can pick it up today. And I actually met a, an author, actually one of James Patterson's co-authors at a, a writer's conference in New York City. And he said, give me your business card. And I said, I don't have one. I gave him the book. And he sent me an email the next day. And he said, your book's going right in the toilet. And I said, why? And he said, best place to read it, one page at a time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, it's advice your mother should have given you, but never did, right? So the stories are hilarious. Um, there was one, talk to people. So each each page just has, um, see if I can, just has like the, the top. And then it's just a little blurb about things that can change your life or you should, you know, just advice. Talking to people on the plane. I love that story because here you are strangers and sometimes it's really awkward. You sit down beside someone and, you know, you never know how it's going to go. And it sounded like you bonded with this gentleman and found out you had so much in common and just built a relationship, you know? It's it's interesting because all of these stories happened to me and I would tell some of them in, in Get a Life. And one of the most interesting things was um, one of my girlfriend's friends said, I hate Trevor. And she said, why? And she said, well, because there's nothing in this book I didn't really already know, but it's just the best reminder to go out and do all of those things. And now I want to do all them all and I don't have any time. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's fabulous. I think I need to go through and read it again because I read it when you sent it to me and then put it put it on the shelf. But when I got it back out this morning, I'm like, I need to go through this again. <laughs> it just makes me smile. I made it really interesting because there are no page numbers. And when people tell me I loved your book, I say, what page? And they can't tell me and they have to think of the story that's on that I page. And it's great. So <laughs> so you're working on some new um, projects. Why don't you tell us about that? I've been a computer weenie for a long time and uh, done everything from high level strategy and business um, innovation and computer and IT innovation down to programming. I've done it. I've taught it all of the, the thing. But I make a joke that I got kicked out because I was always doing what was right for the customer. <laughs> so I'm trying to find some word. But as I became a, a more well-known speaker, I decided that I was teaching a session called Finding Your Passion. And in the middle of it, they said, Trevor, what's yours? <laughs> and I said, oh, I forgot to do the work. <laughs> so <laughs> we worked it out at that moment. I, I stalled and I said, what do you think it is? What do you think it is? And they, we came up with the fact that I was a storyteller. Yeah. And I have stories and people tell me that I changed their lives. Ultimately, I was the catalyst that they needed at that moment. And I'm very honored by that. And so that's become my passion is to go out and do that kind of work, make a difference in the world. That's my sphere of influence and grow my sphere of influence. So 2023, because I tried sort of at the start of the pandemic, uh, 2023 is the year that I am now full time keynote speaking. And I've been going back and forth. I've, you know, I can sit down and write a ton of books, uh, but I've got to be on a stage, mostly on stage. Zoom's okay, but standing in front of a stage, the audience is mine. We have a lot of fun. I did street theater for six years, and oh boy, that changes the way my presentations are. <laughs> I <laughs> bet. So, yeah. In fact, yeah. if you look at my website, you'll see a picture of me with hair way down my back. Um, playing at a renaissance festival and um well your headshot you <laughs> sent me we'll have it up <laughs> yeah yeah and i yeah Don't so it's been interesting you were a boring speaker i have no fear <laughs> of that <laughs> well you know, it's interesting because is... uh the secret is ultimately that i'm shy and you know that's a lot of performers are shy people so when I go places, I'm an observer and I love to observe, but you put me in front of a stage, on top of a stage, in front of an audience, and um, they're mine. I 
Uh, I belong to the Speakers Association Austin chapter, and I was the MC this weekend. And I stood up and I said, this is my last meeting. I'm being deported back to Australia. <laughs> and I told a story about that. And they're all sitting there looking at me like, what? But it's I have to tell stories. That's what I am. And I translate complex things to simple things. And never iron when you're naked is exactly that. It's <laughs> taking something that might be complex and giving you a simple way to look at it with a different perspective. That's hilarious. Well, I think that's one of the things, you know, this is really great. You know, it's great to have the first time of meeting you. And I'm going to be definitely looking to uh, get a copy of your book because uh, it really sounds uh, impactful. You know, the thing that, that really amazes me uh, that a lot of people don't realize that the impact that they can make through their story and turn it into a speaking career. I mean, that is powerful. Someone says, well, I'm not a good speaker. Well, you know, when you're telling your story and you realize it's your audience and who you are speaking to, then you can become a, a better storyteller and be able to share that because your book is such a powerful tool and it's the key to opens the door to many <laughs> opportunities. And that's one of the things that we're focusing on uh, in my martial arts community is, you know, instructors stand up and they teach classes every day, but they feel like they're not speakers, you know? So uh, you if you're gonna, you need to learn how to become a better speaker and that's the, that will become the big influence on the success of your, uh, of your business, whether it's in sales, whether it's whatever it's doing is how well you you can understand the people that you're speaking to and communicate with them in a manner in which they want more. They want to have you uh, in front of them, you know, telling your story, leading them or guiding them. It's, it's interesting because I teach storytelling. Um, I have a program called Story to Slides to Stage, which teaches story craft, slide craft and stage craft. And I see a lot of people who are speakers who are really not storytellers. Right. <laughs> and then Absolutely. I see a lot of people who are not speakers who are storytellers. And the there are good storytellers, bad storytellers, good stories, bad stories. And at the last National Speakers Conference last year in Nashville, my favorite story was a young man from NASA who was the world's worst storyteller and the best story you've ever heard. So we were captivated and we connected with him, even though he wasn't great at delivering it, the story was so fabulous. So there are mixes. Becoming a better storyteller is really simply writing your story down and putting it potentially in a book, but writing it down and clarifying it and getting it to the point where you throw out all the little bits that don't matter. <laughs> you know, it's cut, cut, cut. And you've got to be ruthless but storytelling is what humans have done for millennia. We pass things on to next generation. We pass it on to our friends. We sit around a campfire and we all one up each other with a better story than you just told me. Yep. We're all storytellers by nature. And it's a very simple step from telling a story, writing a story, and then speaking the story. Absolutely. That's how legacy is passed on, traditions, wisdom. Yep. Absolutely. So your class that you teach, I'm just brainstorming out loud here. Do you teach it to specifically authors, speakers? Who Who is it for? So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've taught uh, storytelling to businesses, to their sales teams and pre-sales teams. I've taught it to individuals who are speakers and I've taught it to very different groups all over the, the, the world. However, um, and it's been a lot of computer weenies because that's sort of been my history <laughs> and I speak at technology conferences, uh, but it's it's for everybody. The story crafting part is uh, a part of, I, I often do story to stage. So I teach story craft and stage craft. So write the story, get that down and we'll practice speaking it. I love to do day long workshops for that because you get time to do it multiple times. Practice. Yeah. Um, if I do it in a, a presentation, it's a little less effective, but it's great to get those tips and tricks. In fact, I'm working on books. <laughs> I'll show you this one. This one is a small one I wrote 
which is sort of my handout for my slide craft. And I'm trying to do the same thing. It's just a pocketbook. It's not big. Uh, I'm trying to do the same thing. So people can have something to start with, but that's about writing books. And, you know, the one thing that I never thought books would do is take up so much time. So, <laughs> you know, I finally sat down and wrote Never Iron over. I'd been writing it every day, like three stories a day, every day at lunchtime oh, at wow. Starbucks or at Barnes and Noble. And uh, I just wasn't getting anywhere. So I sat down at Christmas and did two weeks of just solid writing and got it done. And then, you know, that's the start of the process. There's the editing and et cetera. But um, I'm trying to do the same right now, as you know, Natalie, with the second edition. I had thought I'd write a sequel, which was going to be called Open Your Eyes As Wide As Your Mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I'm just going to add a few more. And we're going to make a second edition of Never Iron, and uh, we'll see where that comes out in my my time of building my business. So I'm working on that balance right now. So, so talk to me about how you sign your books in crayon. So, uh, using technology, I've often leveraged Lego, and we play. And so one of the things I've been doing forever is I hand out paper and crayons and have people engaged in what we do. One of my things in the book is draw and I make people draw. And I, I sort of tease them and I end up, they draw a stick figure and it's just, I make them <laughs> the hand and say, you're artist. but we use crayons. So I always sign my book in crayon and um, try and always throw in URXO, which is my message for you are extraordinary and um, maybe throw in a message if I know the person. So I try and do it in, well, I've had one guy said, no, you've got to sign it. I said, I don't have a crayon. He said, well, buy one. <laughs> didn't have time. So I've signed one in pencil. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, that's great. Well, so we will definitely talk about your workshop because maybe it's something that we can pull into what we're doing. We're helping authors to lay out their book and stuff. So storytelling is definitely a strong part of that. Okay. That'd be lovely. I'm happy to help. Absolutely. So when can we um, look forward to your next book or am I putting you on the spot? <laughs> um, so I'm focusing on building my business processes right now. And that's taking a little bit more time than I had expected. And every time I say, yeah, I'll sit down and <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, I've actually worked out that what I just need to do is make a disciplined approach, which is to write every day. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to add one hour of writing every day to my schedule. And I've been starting to be successful. I've got one hour of writing, one hour of reading and one hour of exercising. <laughs> Perfect. And, uh, uh, hang on, what am I going to, when am I going to do the rest of my stuff? So <laughs> I'm trying to find the right balance for that. Uh, it's only about 15 pages away. Mm -hmm. And I would say that's going to be an effort of about 30 days of writing. Um, and then, of course, you know, we know the process can be a little longer beyond that. But uh, get the writing done, get the editing done. Uh, apparently, and here's a challenge for you. I have a typo in my book oh. and I am known as the anal retentive spell checker and I have a typo in my book. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I challenge people to find it, but uh, I'm hoping that in the editing process, we'll make sure that that one gets cleaned up. <laughs> well, so. Absolutely. So I like what your approach is because so many people um, think it's going to take 10 years to write a book. But really, an average little book could be, say, you know, 30,000 or 40,000 words. If you break that down to if you can write, say, a thousand words a day, which is not very many. Yep. How, do you know how many words do you write in your one hour block? Have you ever? Um, I can write about 2000 when I've already got the topic written down. When I'm doing any research or anything, obviously, that takes a little sure. longer. But um, I've been writing technical articles and my blog for many years. So the writing process itself and people are saying, use ChatGPT. And 
what I discovered is, is that that is not what you should do to represent you and your writing. But the one thing ChatGPT has been giving me has been triggers for ideas that then I can go write about. So I've been using it that way, but that doesn't help me in the writing. Um, I can probably guarantee that I can get a thousand a day, a yeah. thousand in an hour. But look, it's, it's some days it's, um, you know, some days it flows and some days it doesn't. Sure. And you have to, you, one of the things I teach too is when you're making goals and setting goals and trying to make a difference in the world, you can't beat yourself up if you don't do it exactly the way that you had planned. That's life. And right. it's the same with writing. You've got to basically accept that it will go the way it goes. You just have to have the discipline to sit down and keep at it. And so that's all. Just keep at it. Absolutely. Well, let me show your book one more time. Never Iron When You're Naked by Trevor Perry. You can get it on Amazon. We'll put the links uh, below. Thank you so much, Trevor. Any last words? No, thanks for having me. Look, I'm honored and uh, you guys keep up the great work that you're doing and inspire the next generation of authors. Thank you. All right, great. And so, hey, thank you for being on. Everyone, if you're looking to uh, sit down and chat with someone about your book project, you can go to uh, elitepublications.org, schedule a time, and we will... Uh, reach out to you, set up a time, chat with you about your book. We always are looking to hear from inspiring authors that have ideas of things they want to do. And that's it for me. Any last words from you, Natalie? No, just get your message out there. Come and chat with us, whether you want a written book or an audio book, we're ready to help you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.